Welcome to Corbin's Corner. It, it's so very good to be able to sit here with you and just be able to talk about the war today. We're so very thankful for everything that he's doing. And I don't know if you can see any part of what are going on, what is going on in these days. Not just the negative. Take your mind off the 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 media, the fixed news. Take your mind off of Facebook. And I want you to just begin to look at what's going on, not only in the church buildings that are running and that should be running, but in the streets, the, the, the revival is, is starting to, to form a great revival that many prophets have talked about for a long time. And I'm going to tell you tonight, and actually it's crazy, I've been, God's been speaking to me about this. I was sent a prophecy today uh, from a pastor, and I also have a pastor friend I work with today who preached a similar message. And you see, they're like holiness type people. But he, he shook up a church the other day with this message. And I'm going to tell you, I know this message to be true. You can trust me, not trust me. I really say pray and, 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 and pray to God for discernment that what I'm saying is correct. Um, a lot of people aren't going to like this message, not too particular. But this message is the message that somebody heard that set me free. Because I was... Somebody you would have counted out from the kingdom of heaven. I was somebody who you would have never given two cents to. Or even cared to lay your opinion to. Your, your words to. And thank God for people who did, you know. I'm going to name this, this message. trying to think of what I want to name it because I'll probably preach it some more. Sorry, I'm not a little bit more prepared on that. I've just kind of been moved with the Spirit on my way here this evening. I think I'm going to name it Move with God or Get Out of the Way because <laughs> you're going to push. You're going to get pushed out of the way anyways if you don't. I just, uh, I, I want to I want to go into prayer tonight and I pray that you would Deeply come into prayer with me and, and try to come into agreement and ask God to really open your ears and your eyes and your heart to be softened and cleansed by the Word of God tonight. Father God, we thank you so much for this opportunity, God. I pray that every person in their homes watching from their TVs, whether it be two or two thousand, would, would feel your spirit move on them right where they lay, God. Begin to touch them right now in the name of Jesus. Let your arms, your loving arms, wrap around them, God. And when I say the word loving, I mean loving, God. Father God, I pray tonight that this would, would, would touch any religious person that has been stuck in religion and stuck in a spiritual rut for, for some time now, God. Father God, we, just, we speak in the name of Jesus that those ties and those chains be broken right now. For it is a sickness that kills religion, both physically and spiritually, Father. Father God, I pray that you would set the captives free, soften the hearts of men and women, and open eyes and ears to the blind and deaf tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Um, I'm actually, I think I might change the message name. Uh, we're going to call this one Arise, O Sleeper. Because, well, it's, first of all, it's, it's kind of different because I would usually preach a message like this to the lost but this really, I think, needs to be spoken to God's people. Because I feel like the church in America, before COVID hit, and even some still ignorantly after this plague has hit our nation, are still sitting in a pew mentality, a danceless, singless, worshipless mentality, and... Afraid to move with the Spirit of God. 
So we're just going to go right into reading the word tonight. I'd like you to turn your Bible to the Matthew, to Matthew 21, verse 1. We're just going to read the whole chapter. Um, I am reading from the King James Version. You can read whatever version you, you'd like. I like the Amplified, but I'm using the King James for the sake of uh, church members who, who would rather hear that or is used to hearing that. Um, I know that it's more correct uh, in, in the languages uh, compared to some of the other transliterations that are out there. But Father, I just pray that you would sanctify this word, God. Let it be read for your glory. For your glory only. In Jesus' name. We go right into it. It says, And when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem, this is Jesus and his disciples, and were come to Bethpage unto the Mount of Olives, they sent Jesus two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway you shall find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto you, you shall say the Lord hath need of them. And straightway will he send them. Man, ain't it awesome that God will always provide for his people anything he tells them? I just wanted to put that in. It's pretty amazing. It just really is, guys. Um, let's see here. It says, All this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet, saying, Tell ye the daughter of Sion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee, meek and sitting upon a donkey, and a colt, the foal of a donkey. And the disciples went and did as Jesus commanded them, and brought the donkey and the colt, and put on them their clothes, and they sat him thereon. And a very great multitude spread their garments in the way. Others cut down branches from the trees and straw them in the way. And the multitudes that went before and them followed cried, saying, Hosanna, the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. And when he was coming to Jerusalem, all the city was moved, saying, Who is this? And the multitude said, This is Jesus, the prophet of Nazareth. Of Galilee. And Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple, and overthrew the tables of the money changers, and the seats of them that sold doves, and said unto them, It is written, My house shall be called the house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. And the blind and the lame came to him in the temple, and he healed them. And when the chief priests and scribes saw the wonderful things that he did, and the children crying in the temple and saying, Hosanna to the son of David, they were sore displeased, and said unto him, Hearest thou what these say? And Jesus said unto them, Yea, have ye never read, Out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? And he left them and went out into the city into Bethany, and he lodged there. Now in the morning as he returned into the city, he hungered. And when he saw a fig tree in the way, he came to it and found nothing thereon, but leaves only, and said unto it, Let no fruit grow on thee henceforth forever. And presently the fig tree weathered away. And when the disciples saw it, they marveled, saying, How soon is the fig tree withered away? Jesus answered and said unto them, Verily I say unto you, If you have faith and doubt not, you shall not only do this which is done to the fig tree, but also if you shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea, it shall be done. And all things whatsoever you shall ask in prayer, believing, you shall receive. And when he was come into the temple, the chief priests and the elders of the people came unto him. As he was teaching and said, By what authority do you do these things? And who gave you this authority? And Jesus then answered unto them, I also will ask you this one thing, which if you tell me, and likewise, I will tell you by what authority I do these things. The baptism of John, whence was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned within themselves, saying, If we shall say from heaven, he will say unto us, Why did you not then believe him? But if we shall say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered Jesus and said, We cannot tell. And he said unto them, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. But what think ye? A certain man had two sons. And he came to the first and said, Son, Go work today in my vineyard. He answered and said, I will not. But afterwards, 
He repented and went. (laughs) And he came to the second and said, likewise. And he answered and said, I go, sir. And he went not. Whether them twain did the will of his father. They said unto him the first. Jesus said to them, Verily I say unto you, That the publicans and the harlots go into the kingdom of God before you. For John came unto you in the way of righteousness, and you believed him not. But the publicans and the harlots believed him. And yea, when he had seen it, repented not afterwards. That ye might believe him. Here another parable. There was a certain householder which planted a vineyard and hedged it from round about and digged a wine press in it and built a tower and let it out to husbandmen and went into a far country. And when the time of the fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the husbandmen that they might receive the fruits of it. And the husbandmen took his servants and beat one and killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants more than the first and they did unto him the likewise. But last of all, he sent unto them his son, saying, They will reverence my son. But when the husbandmen saw the son, they said among themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him, and let us seize on his inheritance. And they caught him, and cast him out of the vineyard, and slew him. When the Lord therefore of the vineyard cometh, what will he do unto those husbandmen? They said unto him, He will miserably destroy those wicked men, and will let out his vineyard unto other husbandmen, which shall render him the fruits in their seasons. Jesus said unto them, Did you ever read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore say unto you, The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on the stone shall be broken, but on whomever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. And when the chief priests and Pharisees had heard these parables, they perceived that he spake of them. But when they sought to lay hands on him, they feared the multitude because they took him for a prophet. Father God, I thank you for your word, God. I thank you for it's the thing that sanctifies us and it cleans us. God, that changes the inward. Father God, that later changes the outward, Father God. Father, we love you and we thank you, Father God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit. And it's power thereof, God, to change us. Father, let it change the dull and deaf minds that hear this tonight. In Jesus' name. Awake, O sleeper. How long have we been stuck in a a religious system that has excluded the power... Thereof, of the gospel. Not just the saving power, but the healing power. Because, you know, gospel means message. And when we say a message, in the Greek it talks about it. It is The message was just pertaining to the kingdom of God. And in the kingdom of God, it comes with a few perks. If one has faith to believe it through the spirit of God and by grace, that healing can, can come. That that God can prosper. That God can totally revamp and change the life of an individual. If you think that is not true, you need to get into the scriptures of God. I'm going to tell you guys, I was a lowly, 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 lonesome, miserable, sinful man. I was a drug addict that that had begin to... Had, Begin to find no love in his heart. No purpose. No sense of who I was. I had nothing to guide me. I had nobody on my side preaching this truth. Now, I went to churches. But, you know, they just repeated the scriptures. And they sang the songs. But it's like the lack of the power thereof. Guys, I was blind, but now I see. And it was the same very Jesus that touched a man. <laughs> and, and, and I don't know what denomination or, or what religious organization or what occult you're part of today. Because if it's any other way besides the Word of God through the Spirit of God, it is a, a cult. It is a man-made 
thing. And tonight we want to get, I have nothing wrong with church buildings and churches. In, in fact, I'm about to be hopefully licensed in the church of God. And that's, that's not because I care about men's praise. But, but you know, that opens doors and opportunities for me to preach the gospel all over the nations where I know God has called me to go, me and my young wife, Cora. Um, but we're missing something. I, you know, it's always, I hear it, I hear it. If you don't hold the Sabbath, you're going to hell. If you don't, if, if you don't go to church on Saturday, the real Sabbath, you're going to hell. If, if, if you don't, if you don't preach this way, or if you don't look that way, notice I'm wearing a t-shirt tonight, and it is, it is called Unchained Recovery. It's my friend Willie's group, Unchained. Check it out sometimes, guys. It, it's it's uh it's awesome. It, he has a show on Tuesdays, I believe. And I don't I don't know if it's on Tuesdays. I can't remember what day it goes on. But it is a re- group. They come together, a recovery group. They come on Friday nights and they meet and talk about their weeks and about what they're going through. They hold each other up and sharpen each other as iron sharpens iron with a realistic view that God can totally heal you, but we still need to hold each other accountable. Amen. Um, but I'm going to tell you, it's always some type of division, whether they're playing music. You know, some churches, you can't even play music, can play instruments. And then in another service, just like what we do, you know, I do hip hop and, and I know it can set people free. That they can listen to that as my platform to preach. See, this is a different platform. I feel a lot of times that I'm preaching, if I preach here, that it's to seasoned Christians that's sitting at home. Um, but I say to you, arise, O sleeper, and step out of your bounds of religion today. I feel that some people know that they're in religion, and God's been calling them into deeper waters for quite some time, but they've been scared to do it. You see that we can back all of what I'm saying up in this in this chapter. You see, Jesus comes into the temple, and I know it's not what they, they were used to, the type of worship maybe that went in the temple. And these people are, are singing, Hosanna, the son of David, and the religious leaders, the Pharisees, and yes, we still have a bunch of them today that believe they know God and they don't, are saying, can you tell them, are you not going to rebuke them? And he says, My, I, <laughs> haven't you heard it written? See here. Have you never read out of the mouth of babes and sucklings thou hast perfected praise? I'm going to tell you where my praise come from. No matter what type it is. Where my praise come from, I'm glad to wake up in the morning and I don't have addiction anymore. I don't know if you can see these t- the tears coming to my eyes. I'm thankful the blood of Jesus saved my life on more counts than one. And, and I'm here to tell you I'm full force at it. I'm here to serve my God, which is in heaven. I know right now, right above me, because of my prayers, because of his promises and a praying mama at home, that there are angels flying above me, protecting me and ministering me night and day, lest I dash my foot against a stone. Believe that. That's the word of God. These are promises for you as a child of God. I'm going to tell you that I just see a lot of times... Uh, before I say this, I was just talking to my friends today about they wanted to, you know, do their own thing. It's a newer thing, so that way that that God can be preached more often, and that in, in a way that's different. Just to show love, talk about what they've been through, and tell them that God can save them. And I tell them what the issue with 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 with, with um. The issue with a lot of organizations is when they started, they meant good because they got saved or they got moved on by God in a certain way at a certain time and they try to replicate it. But it leaves, a lot of times leaves no room for the Spirit of God to move and do what He wants. Because ultimately it's not up to you. Ultimately it's up to what the Lord wants and I believe there's still fruit in things. I believe there's still movements, but you're not going to get quite a, a move of God like you want. Or like, better yet to say, like he wants unless he is completely organizing it. You see, we can get so pamphleted and ruled out 
that there's no room for God to move. It's two songs here, a message, this many minutes, maybe 25, maybe 35, 30, whatever it is, and then it's time to go. Well, see, what God wants to do is flatline all that. I've been to service five, six, seven hours, guys, and didn't even know I was in there that long. Because I was in the joy of the Lord. I was in the joy of the Lord. And I'm going to tell you, I'll give you another story uh, that, that, that is great for this. Um, the Lord said that there was two men praying. One went out and said, you know, I'm so glad with his head up high, staring at heaven. I'm so glad I'm not like all these others, these sinners. I don't, I don't get drunk and I don't do this, I don't do that. I pay my tithes and I, and I do this and I do that. And, and, and he went away guilty. And the other came out and said, Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know who I am and I know who you are. He was coming from a heart of worship and and a heart saying, God, help me. I know that I'm still not clean. The Lord says, why why tell your brother he has a speck in his eye when you have a beam in your own eye? Guys, the devil is really good at dividing the church. I promise you. He was doing it. Jesus called men and women who studied his word and talked about him in the synagogues on the Sabbath. Children of their father, the devil. I want you to know, I want you to test the spirits today. We all know that that the spirit of the Antichrist is anything other than Jesus. Crucified, raised from the dead, forgiveness of sins through his blood, grace, faith through grace. Grace through faith. But there can be so much division that is torn into the church that allows us to to come into a place where we cannot help anybody else anymore. We can help no one get into the kingdom of God. The Bible says the man who holds what they has and buries it is a wicked servant. You ever felt that on you? And I felt that spirit of religion, the devil trying to put that on me. You go to the store and you see somebody who's in sin. You go, you know, you're thinking, oh, I'm glad I'm not living I'm glad I'm going home to my soap or something. Bible says, do not boast and where you are, because no man, you know, any man can fall any day. You know, the Bible says, pray that you're not tempted. Jesus said, I pray that you would not be sifted by Satan as a, as a, uh, as a flower. Sifted like flower. I think it is. I think it is. And I'm telling you that that the devil will do it if, if you don't let God use you. I'm here tonight to commission you. There's a lot of harlots and thieves and drug addicts and alcoholics out here that need somebody to love them. They need compassion. They need the Spirit of God to touch their lives and change them. Their inner being Like, nothing they've ever felt. Some were searching after these things for love. And they're just searching. You ever heard that song? Searching for love in all the wrong places. Now, I don't encourage secular music. But, he's right. We're just searching for love. That song wouldn't be written and got popular if it wasn't true. People just want love. Are you willing to give it to them today? Are you going to be the person wearing a dress? Snarled up at the guy at the gas station for having tattoos and buying a case of beer? Are you going to let them know some news, some good news that can set them free? I mean, it's pretty harsh to believe, you know, that You could preach the word of God your whole life, still go to hell. It's pretty awful. It's time to get out of just what man teaches you. I have a lot of good friends, a lot of good teachers, a lot of good pastor friends, but I don't take every word for word as complete truth. I, I test it with the Spirit of God and with the Bible. And every word I'm not. Every word I say is not going to always be perfect.
perfect. I know that. Test me with the word. Study the Bible. Pray that the Holy Ghost would come in and fill you and, and, and give you the mind of Christ. But neither do I allow man to let me down. Or to give me upset. Sometimes I get a little upset. But man, I just want people to get out of religion. And I want people to feel the love of God. People are starving. Every day. People are being shot and killed every day in gang relations. People are being brutally murdered. Abortions are going around the clock. Suicide happening every second. And they just needed some good news. They needed some love and some compassion and some care. They needed the love of God. Man, it's tough to miss out on something God has for you in a service because you showed up and somebody was doing worship in the form of hip-hop. You know, I just pray that God would use me and I commission you. Say, God use me in this last great revival, which I'm going to tell you guys is going to be full of people you would have counted off. People are going to dress different. They're going to look different. They're going to be covered in tattoos. Covered in tattoos. Covered in, in, in shame that's going to come in. And they're not going to play Southern Gospel. And they're not going to sing hymns that were once not existent. Do you know that Southern Gospel was once probably called the devil? And that this move of God was the devil. And it's always the devil. The devil is a liar. He's a murderer. He's hateful. Where in the type of praise with God's word in it to God? Or encouragement for brothers? It is lying and murder and, and thievery there. He... Open your eyes tonight, God. God, I pray that you would touch touch the people, Lord. God, I just want them to feel my sweet I want you to feel my sweet spirit. The spirit that keeps me night and day. And I'm telling you, I just worked a long, hard day. And I got a lot going on always. Between ministries and owning a business and helping other people's businesses out, etc., etc., etc. Not complaining. I'm thankful, God. Thank you, God. Send me more. But it just, you know, went smooth as butter. And I ain't get mad about nothing. Because <laughs> the Spirit of God's in me. And I'm going to tell you, if God wants me to go use me tonight, I say, God, use me. God, use us in this, these last days. Yeah, I said the last days. Remember tonight that God still heals. He still saves. He still prospers. But this move may not look like the last one and the last one before that. God's doing a new thing in the earth. You want to be a part of it. Arise, O sleeper. Father God, I thank you for this day. Lord, please don't want to let this word go out vain. Please give somebody the hearing to change and, and Move on this message. Father God, we love you and we thank you and give you all the honor and glory and praise for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Love you guys. I hope you guys have a fantastic night and catch me next Saturday again. We'll be trying to hit some interviews. God bless. In Jesus' name.